Hi, I'd like to do a little mini lecture on data types and I'd like to use the, the Code Composer Studio Integrated Development Environment to make this more interesting. Hopefully you've looked at the, uh, the data points uh, lectures that were uh, with the uh, on Google Slides and uh, tried to understand that. What I'd like to do is, is show how, how you might be able to understand it a little better using the integrated development environment where you can actually play with things yourself. Um, assuming you have a little MSP430 board. Um, I'd just like to remind you of what you've seen. Um, remember uh, this floating point number here, 0x4040 with four zeros after that. This turned out to be 3. Just remember that. And the other thing you need to remember here is that ASCII 0x66, 0x66 is a small lowercase f. So with that, let's actually go start Code Composer Studio. On my Ubuntu install, it's over here on the left. I'm using version 6.1.3. And uh, it's starting up here. And hopefully what we can do is make a new project here. Uh, I'd like to make a new project. So you go under Project, New Code Composer Studio Project. I'd like to make a C project here. And you, I have the MSP 430F5529 already in here. You probably need to type the MSP 430F5529 right there so that you can find it and filter for it. It's there for me because I've already compiled some programs for this processor. Let's call this project um, name uh, data types um, lecture. Okay, and we want an assembly project with a main.c so we can say finish looks good to me. So it's making that project for us. We don't need to look at breakpoints right now, so I'm just going to close that. And here's our assembly language right here. I think I'd like to replace that with something I have in the paste buffer. So I don't have to. Oops, I should have replaced that also. Um, so here we have it. Um, I just uh, basically did some very, very basic stuff here. Uh, first thing, this, uh, this line right here is to stop the watchdog timer. The watchdog timer is a, a timer that um, counts down on the processor and if you don't reset the timer variable um, before it counts down to zero it will reset your processor and, and it's really a way of, of um, keeping from locking up on, on little embedded projects where you don't want that to happen. So that's just the watchdog timer. Generally, that's at the top of most of your programs there, unless you're actually using the watchdog. Um, so then I just declared some variables, and this is something you're used to from C here. I declared an integer i as 5. I declared an unsigned character ucar as 0x66, which, um, remember, that was um, an f, right, in ASCII. I assigned a, assigned a character to the letter A. I made an unsigned int, uint, and I made that basically FFFF. Um, and I have a float, which I made as 3. And I guess I don't need this float result because I'm not using it, so let's get rid of that. And then I have return 0 down here. I want to put a, a, a breakpoint right here, so if I just click double click right there with the left mouse button it puts a breakpoint right there and that will stop me so that uh, it doesn't return zero and exit the program. If it does that when I'm in debugger mode you know, and I just run it um, I will you know it will just throw away all the data just it just declared here and and really we need to do something here uh, because if we just compile this thing like it is we're gonna have a problem the problem is that I never ever used any of these variables and the compiler is actually quite smart and it will look at that and it will say you dummy 
you never use those things. So I'm not even going to bother declaring them because there's no use to because you never used them for anything. So I'm going to turn off optimizations on the compiler so that that doesn't happen. So you go over here to uh, your project name and you right click on it and you show build settings. And you go down here to uh, under build options, look at the optimization and we don't want register level optimizations, we want optimizations completely off. The other thing uh, I'd like to do is I'd like to go here under processor options and if you've actually been looking ahead at the instruction set architecture you will remember there were 27 instructions we talked about in the PowerPoint. Well, it actually turns out that we have a little bit fancier MSP430 processor. This MSP430 F5529 has like 128K of RAM instead of fixed 64K. And so to address the, those extra, that extra memory, it needs what's known as extended, extended instruction set. And I don't want to use those because we haven't talked about those yet, so I'm just going to click on this guy and, uh, and select the MSP instructions instead of MSPX instructions. And uh, I think that's probably good enough for the settings here. Let's say OK. And then let's actually build this thing. This is compiler. The C compiler is going to compile the code into assembly and and the assembler is going to link it and uh, when we hit this little bug it'll actually run the thing in debug mode so first of all let's see if it compiles with no errors so it looks like there were six warnings let's look at those just to be sure there's nothing deadly there well it couldn't find a link to the library for math well I never did any calculations so I guess hopefully that's not a problem and then it just said the variables were referenced but never, uh, well, was declared but never referenced. So, yeah, I knew that was going to happen. So, yeah, it's got those warning messages there. But uh, let's go see what kind of code it uh, made. Hopefully it didn't actually optimize those things out like I was worried about. So I clicked the little bugger, uh, little bug there. This, by the way, um, there's a lot of different things you can do here. You can... Uh, you can debug a lot of different stuff, but I want to debug the, the active project here. So it's basically loading the code onto the MSP430 board right now, which is plugged into my uh, USB port. And it stops the code here at, at um, the beginning of the, the main program. And, uh, oh, there we go. I was beginning to wonder what was happening. I wasn't seeing my variables over here in the, in the variables window. There's a lot of different windows you can look at here. Um, we have the uh, disassembly window. That's the, the one over here It says disassembly. We have the variables window. Um, there is even the expressions window we could click on. It's not, uh, it's underneath the variables window right now, the registers window that's under there. There's a memory browser which would allow us to look at memory, uh, you know, just see what's in there. And um, now that we could open a breakpoints window to see where that breakpoint was, but I can also see it down there on line 15. So there's a lot of different uh, views you can do. There's, uh, we're right now in what's known as the debug perspective. These are perspectives here. The edit perspective was where we were before. And, uh, and I have another one called CCS debug addressing modes perspective that I have set up for another program. So let's uh, look at these things up here. This, this button here is the run or resume. It will actually run the code. This terminates the debugger. This thing steps uh, um, into a um, subroutine call that you have a C subroutine call. This thing steps over a C subroutine call. And this thing right here um, steps one, uh, one step, and that's it, a 1C statement. And then there's some green ones over here. These are assembly. And you can step in assembly language as well. And you can see the assembly language over here in the machine language. Like, for example, if we look at here, the first, first instruction was to stop the watchdog timer. So these uh, right here, these three words, are basically uh, the machine code for move.w immediate uh, 5A80 to the watchdog timer control register. 
and uh, so that's uh, that's what that is and and this is the C statement uh, that goes in where it says seven right here that's what you see over here on statement line seven this this is the address here 0x 4400 where main actually starts I could go over here and hover on that um, and it would tell me, yeah, it's uh, starting at 0x 4400 right down here. So um, if we look at here, here's the first statement I did that was important, int i equals 5. So there it is in, in C, and here it is down here in, a, in machine code. Here it is in assembly language. It moves the word immediate 5 into the stack pointer plus 0. So uh, the stack is a thing that we uh, are going to talk about before uh, or later. It's a last in, first out data structure in, in RAM. And basically what happens is you just push things onto the stack. And this is pushing the first five onto the stack. It uses two bytes to do that. And then we've got an unsigned character, 0x66, which was the F. And it moves 0x66 into... Um, two bytes uh, into the stack. It, it basically uh, moved it uh, two bytes into the stack. So we've got uh, a 66, um, two bytes in there. And it did a move.b. So this is just a, a byte move. These are dot .w or word moves. And when you get into the instruction set architecture, you'll understand what these things are doing. But this is, this is the assembly language over here, and that's the... Uh, these are the machine code, and these are the addresses where all this is happening. And um, these are the, uh, the C statements that go with that. So if I was to just move down the C statements here, I could, uh, you know, just uh, step along here. And uh, so I just moved the uh, watchdog timer. Um, and it actually looks like it's not going to change anything because I'd run this program before. And so it's just loading it with what was already there before. So um, that, that's exactly what's happened. Notice this 3 here moved a 4040 into the stack here. And this statement before it cleared the, the word before that in the stack. So it's 4040 with four zeros because of this clearing, which makes 0 put 0 in there. And uh, and then I'm actually, you know, I'm actually say stopped. Actually, I was just stepping along, but uh, here's my break point right there. I actually um, a little bit past that, or this is the next thing that's going to be, uh, you know, and actually executed. And if I hit this, it's going to stop. Um, I think. <laughs> well, maybe not. Let's run this and see if it goes. Yeah, it finishes up and. And then I can't see my data, so now you see why I put the breakpoint there. So if I I can go over here and I can do um, a pause, and and if I want to, I can actually do a reset here, which will restart me back up at uh, in the main just where I was. And if I just push play, it should stop me at that breakpoint, and there it is. So you can see these are the things that were stored there. And these are actually the stack addresses in RAM where those things were stored. And uh, oh, let's see, what else can I show you here? Actually, if you look at some of these things, they're a little bit... Um, um, the debugger isn't uh, interpreting things the way you might expect because... Um, um, characters and unsigned characters are actually uh, well, let's see that says unsigned character that says unsigned character so actually it doesn't have a difference between unsigned character and character this C compiler probably doesn't so it takes those two guys as being the same here's an int which is um, um, five and unsigned int that would be minus one, but it's an unsigned int, so it is giving you this number sixty five thousand five hundred and thirty five, which is um, the FFFF unsigned. So, so you can see that's that's interpreted right. But the C compiler here does the same thing for characters and, and unsigned characters, and you can see that even though uchar was an unsigned character, it gives me unsigned there, but ch was a signed character. 
or just a character, and it also assumes it's an unsigned character. So, um, you know, the C compiler doesn't doesn't differentiate. It doesn't interpret any difference between those two. Uh, so uh, you can uh, adjust the sizes on these windows here with uh, just grabbing this, you know, and you can see more there, or you can make them go up. You can actually drag windows around. You can look at, um, you know, have various different um, things here. If I wanted to see this main bigger, I could double click there, and I can now see more more code. If I double click, it goes back to this uh, perspective here. The console tells me what was happening. The MSP 430 loading was complete. There were 86 code and 46 data bytes written to Flash and uh, and FRAM. The, uh, we'll talk about what FRAM is, uh, and the expector DRAM usage is 160. That's uninitialized plus stack bytes. So this this program here is probably going to use around 160 uh, bytes. There's uh, you know some other things up here that you can look at um, and uh, and look into. But uh, this should give you just a little bit of a peek at what Code Composer Studio will show you. I think at this point we'll, uh, we'll say that's good enough for this video and uh, make another one about something a little different.